Hello, and welcome to this Wednesday Water webinar on innovative and alternative approaches to on-site wastewater treatment, aka septic systems. So for this presentation, we have several discussion topics. So first off, what are innovative and alternative systems, and why would we consider them? When and where? So what are the applications that we would consider using an innovative and alternative system? And what are the benefits and implications of using an advanced, innovative, and an alternative system? So first off, looking at what they are, here's a definition basically of that in italics that talks about that they are an advanced system looking at being creative or innovative, taking in consideration a lot of the particulars about that site, soil quality, soil depth, size of the lot, proximity to neighboring features such as streams or reservoirs or whatever the case may be. And again, these are often called research systems where they're being looked at by agencies as alternative approaches or solutions to challenging sites and challenging conditions. And so there's a lot of different types of alternative systems there, such as drip distribution. Drip's been around for a while and has a lot of uh, interesting applications and we will discuss that in aerobic treatment unit. We have mound systems, different types of mound systems. We have sand filters. We have an evapotranspiration system, constructed wetland where we're using uh, natural or native plants to help pick up organics, nutrients, and water. And then we have cluster or community systems. So if there's a community that has a number of septic systems that are either failing or approaching their, their end of their life, and they may not have space to put in a, a replacement drain field, for example, then a community system might be an alternative. So other terms for innovative and alternative could be non-conventional, experimental, or researchable systems. We use INA typically in challenging sites, as I mentioned. And that may be in soil conditions such as high water table or poor percolation rate or infiltration rates. So poor quality soils where they exist. It may be that an INA could be installed to adequately treat the wastewater. Again, lots of different types of technologies out there, but then also approaches to how those technologies are used such as uh, periodic dosing, time do dosing, for example, where you introduce the wastewater and allow the soil to rest a little bit before you add additional wastewater to it. So a lot of different practices as well as these technologies. And it's important to understand that an INA system or approach does not necessarily mean that every site are suitable. For example, there are just soils that are very poor and where septic systems should not be located because the inability to treat that wastewater. So when would we consider that? Again, lots of different regulations. Here's an example in the state of Maryland that would essentially state that all types of methods would be considered to correct an existing system failure. For example, a clogged drain field. And the site, again, may be very challenging and it has limited space for a replacement. And so what are you going to do? So again, this is where INA technology, and I'm going to say technology and practices can help possibly be a solution for a, a failed site. So a failing system, challenging sites, I've already mentioned these. Of course, these are very uh, important. Then insensitive sites. This is, might be adjacent to a protected area, for example. And so how are you best going to treat that wastewater to minimize the environmental impact to a sensitive area, whatever that may be? And then we also are 
experiencing sea level rise and rising water tables. Okay, when, when water tables are rising, what that means is that we're seeing reduced soil depth to provide that adequate treatment. And so sea level rise is gonna be with us for some time and even getting worse in the future. And therefore we've got to be very open to looking at INA technologies to help find solutions for those homes that are being impacted by rising water tables. Again, I'm gonna emphasize this again, not all sites are suitable for an on-site system. Even systems that exist currently in today's understanding of wastewater treatment and soils would not be permitted. So again, this it, soils are so important to the site and every system is site specific because the soils are site specific and vary greatly even within a relatively small area. You may even have several types of soils on a lot, for example. So why do we use them? Well, challenging sites, rising water tables. We're trying to maximize the wastewater treatment. And in doing so, we have to rely on good quality soils and we have to rely on innovative and alternative technologies to deal with the challenging sites. Again, high water table, uh, it could be impermeable soil, small lots, et cetera. I mentioned sensitive areas. And again, we're trying to maximize treatment effectiveness. So we have what's called an advanced treatment unit, also known as Best Available Technology, or BAT, in Maryland. And these are basically almost like a miniature wastewater treatment plant, okay? The unit is in replace of a septic tank and provides some of the same functions as a typical septic tank, a passive septic tank, but then also adds the important addition of aeration and that aeration is key to provide the beneficial bacteria in the system to help break down the nutrients and the organics. So walking through this particular diagram, which is just a generic system, you have your wastewater coming in from your house by gravity, typically, and then it's going to go into the first chamber. And this is the settling chamber, much like the septic tank that the wastewater comes in, the heavy solids settle down, and then the fat soils and grease float. And then the more clarified wastewater in the center section of this chamber then go over into the aeration chamber. And aeration is provided by different means, depending upon the manufacturer, a bubbler, an agitator, whatever the case may be. Again, providing all that oxygen that's needed for that beneficial bacteria to break down the organics and the nutrients, et cetera. And even does some work on breaking down some of the contaminants that we discharge daily into our system. And then it goes into another settling zone again to trap a little bit more solids. And then depending upon the manufacturer, it could be recirculated back through the system to get an extra cycle of treatment before then, then it is uh, either gravity flowed or pumped out into the dispersal system. The key thing about these advanced treatment units is look at this wastewater sample after the unit. It, the water is clear and essentially odorless. Uh, in contrast to septic tank water, which would be blackish gray and definitely have an odor, tremendous amount of more organics coming from a septic tank than an advanced treatment unit. This clarity and higher quality water obviously reduces both the environmental impacts, um, but also helps to prolong the life of the drain field because the soil doesn't have to work as hard, doesn't get as clogged as quickly as if we were using a septic tank. So these systems do an excellent job of treating our wastewater. And just a quick kind of understanding of how the systems work. Okay, typically uh, most of the nitrogen coming in from wastewater is in the ammonia form. Then we rely on natural beneficial bacteria in the soil to help break down those 
nutrients as well as the organics. So part of the soil and a lot of the beneficial bacteria in soil need oxygen in order to break down and convert the ammonia eventually into nitrate. And then other bacteria in the absence of oxygen break down that nitrate into nitrogen gas, which can be then released back into the atmosphere. So it's a natural cycle that we're utilizing beneficial bacteria to do a lot of the work in wastewater treatment. And it's important to note that the septic tank is primarily there for storage of solids in the fats, oils, and grease, as well as volume. It does some treatment, but it's only about five to 6% of the nitrogen, whereas the advanced treatment units or BAT units are highly more effective and can reach up to approaching 80% reduction in nitrogen. And when we're reducing nitrogen, we're also reducing organics, et cetera. And then the, a typical well-operating drain field will reduce anywhere from 20 to 40% of the nitrogen. So if you have advanced treatment unit and a good drain field, you can actually remove a very large and significant portion of the nitrogen, the nutrients, et cetera. So again, these units are very efficient, very effective. Now here is a schematic of a drip dispersal system. Again, this is a considered an alternative, innovative drain field component of a system. Okay, so basically what we have here, pre-treatment system, advanced treatment system, we may have a pump tank, again, depends upon the manufacturer and the design, and then it is pumped up into this drip dispersal tubing which is generally six to say 12 inches below the, the surface. And it's located in that very active, bioactive region of the soil. And so we're actually getting enhanced wastewater treatment in those shallow regions of the soil. And then again, so the tubing is shallow and you have different zones, which is another innovative approach so what happens in this case, you could be feeding wastewater to zone one for a period of time, and then that's shut off and zone two opens, allowing zone one to rest and continue down the, down the way. So again, a very effective mechanism for treating, and you can operate those drip dispersal systems in, in different ways to allow that wastewater to be treated effectively in the soil. So here's another schematic, again, just showing you a little bit more in 3D, the uh, situation where it's elevated. Again, it's a very shallow distribution system. And then we have mound systems. This is what's called an at grade, tends to be lower in elevation than, say, the typical sand mound. Again, the idea here is that we're trying to get adequate separation or adequate soil depth in order to provide effective treatment. And then we have uh, a sand mound where, again, we're looking at uh, higher elevations. This could be three, four feet in um, height. And then, again, these are very specialized systems, typically used in conjunction with a advanced treatment unit, but they're specialized sand that's been researched to show that it maximizes treatment. And again, these are, are very effective. And then it's just another, uh, again, side view situation where in this case, it's using a septic tank here and then a pump tank, and then it goes into the, uh, the mound system. So lots of different ways, just another schematic of a sand mound showing how that works. And then I mentioned earlier in the introduction that there are opportunities for shared drain fields. In this case, this is what we call a cluster system where each individual home has a, their septic tank. And then that is either gravity flowed or pumped to a shared soil distribution system, whether it be gravel trenches, whether it be drip irrigation, whatever the case may be. So again, this is allows for um, smaller lots to, to do some initial collection, storage, and treatment before it then goes into a community system. Uh, here's a schematic of a above ground sand filter. In this case, this one's partially up above ground. And then uh, what happens here is 
You could have an advanced treatment unit and then the water then is pumped up into the sand filter. So again, this is like a boxed mound, if you will, uh, using the same sort of technology in a way, uh, utilizing sand, but again, providing that uh, adequate depth of, in this case, sand uh, to treat the wastewater before it enters into the natural soil. Again, these would be used where the, you have a very high water table, for example, and uh, can be very effective in treating wastewater. And then in some instances, there are what's called constructed wetlands, again, where you have an advanced treatment unit and then the water is, wastewater is then channeled into a wetland. And then that wastewater then is uh, treated somewhat by the plants, picking up nutrients, helping to settle out some of the, and trap some of the solids. Obviously, the plants are taking up nutrients as well as water, and so you get some evaporation there, um, which reduces the amount of water that actually has to penetrate into the soil. So again, different options. So then there's other systems to consider, and that could be a situation where you're actually using various combinations of what we just described, okay? And then also there could be instances where you have a INA system and utilizing UV filtration to kill off the viruses and bacteria, and then you have a direct discharge into, say, a ditch, uh, whatever the case may be. Spring. Direct discharge is how wastewater treatment plants operate. They treat the water various means, and then they either discharge that water directly into streams, rivers, and in some cases, they also will land apply the wastewater. Then we have above ground systems. Again, I mentioned the above ground sand filter, uh, some new technology that is out there and being researched now are incinerating toilet systems. This is where the actual solid waste would be processed, incinerated on site, and then also incorporates a good bit of water reuse. Perhaps the gray water, as it's termed, would be used for flushing toilets, et cetera, like that. So again, different types of alternatives. These are very important, particularly as we are looking at sea level rise, rising water tables, challenging sites, how to correct a site that no longer can support a replacement of a typical drain field, that we've got to come up with innovative approaches in order to address these solutions. So necessity is and will drive in innovation. The question is, can policy keep up with this? This immediate demand that we have now and increasing in the future how can we expedite policy? And a lot of this will be verifying these systems and how effective they are in different applications. So it is important to note also that the local county or approving authority will determine if and what technology is possible for each site. So I hope this information has been helpful. There is a wealth of information available to you through your local county health department or public works. It depends upon how the that local authority is organized. But again, tap into that resource as well as your state sources.